watching WNBF News. We will not be defined by a hateful shooter. We'll be defined how we support and love each other. This could have been any one of our communities. You will not break us. We are better people than this. Our community will be grieving today, the next few days, the next few weeks, and the next few months. We keep fundraising that's all. He's been crying all morning, so I can't sleep finally. So please keep us in your prayers, and hopefully this madness can stop. Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, whatever faith you follow, please uh, pray for the victims and their families. Those are just a few of the heart-wrenching sights and sounds from Orlando today. Parents searching, loved ones missing, and so many heartbroken still asking why. Good evening and thank you for joining us for WNBF News at 11. The city of Orlando and the entire nation continue to grieve over the act of terror which took place last night at an LGBT nightclub. An armed gunman pledging allegiance to ISIS, firing rounds and targeting civilians. 50 people dead and as many as 50 others hurt in what is being called the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. NBC's Jay Gray has the latest from Orlando. An outpouring of support tonight. A stunned nation searching for strength and answers less than 24 hours after the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Just after 2 a.m., the clash of gunfire rose above the dance music inside the popular gay nightclub Pulse. Oh my God, people are getting shot, dude. At least 50 were killed, 53 or more injured. The deadliest shooting in U.S. history. A ballistic vest here for any of our individuals that are entering the red zone. As police moved in, the wounded were moved to area hospitals, while dozens still inside the club were held hostage. The standoff continuing for three hours before a SWAT team stormed in, killing the suspect during a firefight. And we now have our large MCI unit, 250 patients. As the magnitude of the attack started to sink in, desperate friends and families searched for loved ones. But I don't know where my son is. No one can tell me where my son is. If he's been shot, if he's dead, no one knows. We do know more now about the alleged trigger man, 29-year-old Omar Mateen, born in New York. He moved to Florida with his family more than 10 years ago. The FBI first learned about Mateen four years ago when co-workers alerted agents about comments he made supporting violent extremism. A year later, he was questioned about a passing relationship with a man who became a suicide bomber in Syria. Since then, agents say he showed no signs of preparing for a terror attack. Police say Mateen called 911 just before the attack, pledging his allegiance to ISIS and talking briefly about the Boston Marathon bombing. But his father tells NBC News the killing spree may have been fueled by his anger over something he saw a few months ago in Miami, saying, quote, he saw two men kissing each other and he got very angry. Omar was very upset. Maybe that's why he went after a gay club. As investigators continue to search for that reason, this community and the country now search for comfort. Well, so much support coming in from across the country for the community of Orlando tonight. One of those tributes right here along the Grand Strand. The sky wheel lit up in a rainbow of colors. They posted this photo on Facebook saying, tonight we light our wheel in the colors of the rainbow to pay our respects for those who lost their lives in today's senseless act of violence in Orlando. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of the victims and their families. Also happening tonight, Pulse Ultra Club in Myrtle Beach will be holding a moment of silence in light of the Orlando shooting. The LGBT nightclub shares the same name as the one where the mass shooting happened last night. Josh Robertson is live there with the latest on what people are saying uh, as they see this horrific terror incident unfold. Josh? That's right, Kaylin. They just held the moment of silence right at 11. They also held a moment of silence earlier today at 6 at the exact same time that a vigil was being held in Orlando where the mass
mass shooting took place. Now, those here tonight say their thoughts and prayers are with the families that were affected, the LGBT community, and anyone who has ever felt discriminated against. Pulse Ultra Club posted on Facebook today in wake of the shooting, stating, you are always reminded you have a heart when it breaks and ours is broken. A gay nightclub is supposed to be a place where LGBT people can be themselves without fear and where judgment is left at the door. Those taking part in the moment of silence showed a range of emotions, some voicing anger at what happened, others simply breaking down in tears. Now management at Pulse Ultra Club in Myrtle Beach says Sunday is typically karaoke night and that tradition will continue tonight as well saying, come out tonight and be with family. Sing for those taken away from us too soon. We're all saddened, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's devastating, you know. I mean, you know, you just can't put words to it. I, can, I couldn't imagine being somebody in that situation, you know, like if my husband was there right now, you know. I would, I don't know what I'd do. I'd go nuts. Now, a vigil, leaders in the LGBT community will also be planning a vigil for tomorrow evening somewhere in Myrtle Beach, the time and place of which has yet to be determined. Reporting live in Myrtle Beach, Josh Robinson, WNBF News. Well, let's get to some other local headlines tonight. First, the search is still underway for a swimmer who went missing last night around 14th Avenue Pier. Officials say the boy was swimming with his team who was in town for a basketball tournament. Authorities say several crews searched the missing swimmer using boats, jet skis, and search parties all throughout the night. The U.S. Coast Guard also involved. Those who saw what happened say that several tried to rescue the boy but couldn't see him. No swimming signs are posted all around that pier due to the dangers of the waves and currents. And there were several people, I guess these people staying here too, had flashlights walking up down the beach trying to you know, find them. There was two jumped in down here and they chased down, it turned out to be a cup. But they saw it floating up under the pier and they went after it. Officials say they will continue to search for the missing boy. And if you see anything suspicious in the water near 14th Avenue North, you're urged to call police. Well, tomorrow morning, we're expected to learn more about a fatal shooting that happened overnight in Latta. A press conference will be held tomorrow at the Dillon County Sheriff's Office addressing details about one man found dead. What we know right now is that law enforcement arrived at a home on Laguerre Street in Latta just before 10 last night. The victim was found in a house, but we're told it was not his home. He had reportedly gone there looking for help, and authorities are still trying to figure out exactly where that shooting happened. And they don't have any suspects or persons of interest at this time. Myrtle Beach Police are investigating a stabbing on Ocean Boulevard that happened early this morning. Officials say it happened right near the Skywheel at 10th Avenue North. That stabbing reportedly began when an argument turned physical. We're told investigators are following leads and still looking at evidence. And listen to this, a North Myrtle Beach police officer is luckily okay after he jumped off of his motorcycle just as a car was about to crash into him this afternoon. Motorcycle officer Aaron Jones was reportedly tra traveling east on Main Street when that car pulled out from Oak Street in Jones Lane. These are some images from that scene. Take a look at that motorcycle there. They say it sustained pretty significant damage after uh, the front driver's side bumper of the Mercedes collided with the motorcycle. The collision is being investigated by the South Carolina Highway Patrol. The Dolan County Police Department is asking for your help tonight. They're trying to find out who was involved in a drive-by shooting. It happened Saturday night around 11 on Farm Street. Investigators say that they found several bullet holes in a few different vehicles there. And bullet holes as well were found in a bedroom where two children were asleep. Fortunately, though, no one was hurt. Well, the sunny skies are back with us today. Temperatures pushing towards record levels. North Myrtle Beach, Florence, Lumberton getting to 100 degrees this afternoon. Clear skies tonight, but the humidity really not going anywhere. In fact, temperatures right now still on the warm side, sitting in the 80s along the Grand Strand. And a mixture of 70s, 80s when you get away from the coast. Not going to drop a whole lot tonight. In fact, headed out early tomorrow morning. We'll take the temperatures back down into the 70s. 75 in Myrtle Beach, a couple degrees cooler. They go a little farther inland, and once you get out towards Interstate 95, we're going to be right around 70 degrees. Improvements, though. Now, tomorrow afternoon is going to be warm again, but the humidity takes a little bit of a break by tomorrow. Unfortunately, not lasting long. Quickly returning through the week. In fact, talking about a pretty good chance of rain, especially as we go towards the second half of the week. How's that full seven-day forecast? Look at the work week forecast. That's here in a few more minutes. Coming up after the break, I talked to a Coastal Carolina professor who had studied terrorism. We break down last night's shooting in Orlando and talk about where our country goes from here.
Thank you so much for staying with us here on WMBF News. I have Dr. Richard Kilroy here from Coastal Carolina University with me. He studied terrorism and is actually teaching a class right now on terrorism and political violence. Thank you again so much for being here with us tonight, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kilroy. Uh, and you have a message from Coastal Carolina yes, University. Yes, good evening, Caitlin. Uh, yes, on behalf of the coastal community, I'd just like to send out our thoughts and prayers to the families and the victims of this terrible incident. Thank you so much. And, and I'm sure we all share those so same sentiments here tonight. <laughs> well, let's first talk about the magnitude of the situation in Orlando. This is the deadliest mass shooting on U.S. soil. Where does our country go from here? We face a similar situation after the Virginia Tech shootings in uh, 2007. Uh, at that time, that was the, uh, the largest shooting that we'd had at that incident. And I think the concern was looking at terrorism and looking at acts of terror. Would we have more lone wolf style terrorist attacks like we saw with these two being in Orlando or more state sponsored terrorism or organized terrorism from groups like Al Qaeda and now, of course, ISIS? So I think that's one of the biggest concerns is looking towards the future is what are the types of terrorist incidents that we'll have going forward. And I think this latest shooting is an indicator that more types of terrorist acts from lone, star, lone we call lone wolf terrorists, uh, like the Orlando shooter, would be things that we could expect in the future. And in terms of death, this attack is the deadliest on U.S. soil since 9-11. I mean, has our country become complacent since 9-11? Well, after 9-11, the focus was on terrorism. In fact, that became the overwhelming focus and why we stood up the Department of Homeland Security, uh, while most of our government agencies focused on threats of terror, why we fought a global war on terror. Uh, and if anything, many people thought we lost the focus on other types of threats. And of course, when Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005, we saw the magnitude of that event that we weren't prepared for because we focused too much on terrorism. We went to an all hazards perspective. So I think now we're going back to looking at terrorism as more of the types of events we can anticipate in the future occurring here in the United States. Kind of going off of what you just said there, you know, what can we really do from here to stop these kinds of things from happening again? Well, I think in the latest shooting, I think right now we need to understand what was the motivation, what was the reason behind the shooting. Uh, I think President Obama was correct to call it an act of terror and an act of hate. Uh, we're still trying to understand the motivations of this particular individual. As you mentioned, I'm teaching a class on terrorism and political violence, and the students this week in class were discussing how do we define terrorism. Typically, there's some type of political motivation behind the acts uh, to try to change maybe a government policy or to target a specific group. So in this case, we're still trying to figure out what exactly were the motivations behind this particular individual's uh, reasons for committing this act of violence. You know, up until this point, we've seen shootings at movie theaters, shootings uh, in first grade kindergarten classrooms, uh, is any location safe at this point? As, as a result of the Virginia Tech shooting, I was teaching at Virginia Military Institute at that time. And I think there was a new heightened awareness on college campuses to these types of threats. Uh, and a lot of schools have taken actions now to prevent or at least prepare for the possibility of an active shooter occurring on a college campus. Uh, so I think most communities become more sensitive when these events occur. Uh, the shootings last year in Charleston caused churches to now look at security and think about possible threats to their uh, congregations as well. So whenever an event like this happens, it does cause us to think about what are, our, what are the measures that we do take to try to protect against uh, shootings and events and other actions like this. And we have a little bit of time left, so I just want to ask you one more, one more question here. You know, presidential election coming up, it seems like when an event like this happens, there is a political aspect to it. Can you speak towards that? Uh, absolutely, and I, and I think we have to be careful right now and not jumping to any conclusions or making any statements without all the facts in the case. Uh, they can be exploited for political reasons by either side. Uh, one on the side of looking at trying to tie every act into targeting a specific group or maybe looking at policies like gun control and things like that. Uh, I'll, I'll have to go back to the 2009 uh, shootings at Fort Hood as an example. When that event occurred, the Army was very careful not to call it an act of, of terrorism. They called it an act of terror, but they were concerned about the backlash against the Muslim community in the active duty military at the time. So I think similarly, we have to be careful to rush to judgment with some of these incidents to find out exactly what were this individual's motivations behind this attack and be careful about making too many statements, particularly for political purposes. And a lot of those developments still kind, kind of being worked out right now, a very exactly. fluid situation in Orlando. And we'll make sure to update you guys as soon as we get any updates here into our newsroom. Be warm, but the humidity at least is getting a little bit of a break, but again, it's not going to last long.
Uh, and I went to the Carolina Country Music Festival tonight for just a little bit, and it seemed like once the sun started going down, yeah. a little bit cooler. Once you get some shade, it's tough to find <laughs> shade out there, and you get a little bit of a breeze. Luckily, it's only, what, 200 feet from the beach, so yeah. you get some improvements <laughs> there. And you have to keep out towards Florence, so seeing 100 degrees today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Robert. Yep. Well, coming up next in sports, South Carolina.